Hey everybody, welcome to my video on getting our marginal cost and marginal revenue curves. I'm going to introduce you to a calculus tool called the power rule. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward rule that we're borrowing from calculus. Uh, there's no calculus prereq in my class. I teach this to my students who don't have any background in calculus. Uh, I don't take the time to lay out all the nuances that go in behind the rule. I just teach it as here's a way given a certain kind of formula to get the slope of a line. So let's talk about what we're going to use it for. Uh, I specifically wrote marginal cost and marginal revenue, but we use this word marginal a lot. We also have marginal utility, marginal benefits, sometimes I'll talk about marginal social cost or marginal social benefits. Uh, let's see what else we have. We have marginal product either of labor or of capital. We use that word marginal a lot. Those M's happen all the freaking time. We use it a lot in econ. And so I want to talk in this video about where those come from. That word marginal, it means change in total cost over change in quantity, or change in total revenue over change in quantity, or change in utility over change in quantity, and so on. They're all kind of the same idea. They're referring to how fast something is changing. These are approximations of slopes. If I were to graph my marginal cost curve, and it looked something like this, my marginal cost at any given point is an approximation of the slope. There's the change in total cost, and here's the change in quantity. Now, I'm going to introduce you to the power rule so that rather than getting an approximation of the slope, we can get the real slope. I could tell you what the slope is here, or I could tell you what the slope is here, and it would be accurate and exact. So... Let me introduce you to a rule called the power rule. Uh, the power rule is our calculus trick we're gonna use. I will then, sh after I introduce it, I'll show you how to apply it to get marginal revenue, marginal cost. Uh, and then I could show you how you'd use it for the other ones too, it's all the same. This is a calculus trick. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna imagine we have some function, a function of Q that looks like this, M times Q to the N. So some number times Q risen to some power. My only rule I'm gonna put here is that N does not equal zero. All right. So if we have this function, so I don't know, we might see something that looks like this, 10 Q squared or we might see 5q to the cubed, or something like that. Uh, the m are these numbers out in front, and the n are these exponents. Now, if I want to get the derivative of q, or sorry, the derivative of f, by the way, when I say derivative, I mean the exact calculus version of these marginal things. Instead of triangles, they have Ds. Uh, so, uh, the derivative gives us the exact slope. Rather than approximating the slope on some portion of this 10q squared, I would find the slope at any given point. And so that derivative, which, let's see, I can write it a few ways, df dq, also commonly written as f prime of q. For the sake of putting it with marginal terminology, because I'm introducing you to a topic, I can also call it marginal f. Uh, so we could use all of those the same, no one will actually say marginal f unless they're talking about marginal utility or marginal cost. That f is some piece of something. Marginal function of q, if f equals m n to the q, sorry, m q to the n, is equal to this. 
n times m times q to the n minus 1. So what I did, I brought this n down and multiplied it out front, and then I subtracted 1 from it. That's all. That's the power rule. Multiply the front by the exponent, and then take 1 from the exponent. So to these two examples, if f equals 10 q squared, then f prime, or marginal f, is equal to 2 times 10 to the, times q to the 2 minus 1, which is 20 q to the 1, which is 20 q. Likewise, if f equals 5q cubed, then f prime, or marginal f, is equal to 3 times 5 times q to the 3 minus 1, which is 15q squared. All right, there's your power rule in a nutshell. Now, I want to expand on this just a little bit. And what if we have a bigger function of q, where f of q is equal to some function f q plus another function, 2 of q. Now, what might this look like? Let's take total revenue, for instance. If we have a, dem if we have a demand curve, so the price equals 12 minus q. And I want to get total revenue based on whatever my q is. Total revenue is equal to price times quantity, which in this case is equal to 12 minus q times q, which is 12q minus q squared. Now, my f1 of q could be this 12q, and my f2 of q would be this piece. And I can, as long as they're added to each other and not multiplied by each other, I can do the power rule on both of these. So my marginal revenue, which is dtr dq, I can apply it to both pieces. Uh, let's see. And so I can say, uh, let's, if I say that f1 is equal to 12q, and f2 is equal to minus q squared, well, the derivative of 12q, that's a q to the 1. So 1 times 12 times q to the 1 minus 1 plus, let's see, 2 times negative 1 q to the 2 minus 1 is equal to 12 times q to the 0 is just 12 times 1 Oops. minus 2q. So I was able to apply my power rule to this total revenue function and by applying it to each piece and adding them together, I get this marginal revenue. Now, one thing you might have noticed in my other videos or elsewhere in the class, I always tell you that when you have an inverse demand curve like 12 minus Q, the marginal revenue curve will be the same curve but with double the slope. 12 minus Q, 12 minus 2Q. It comes out of the calculus on how we derive the marginal revenue curve. And it will always do that when we have a straight line. Uh, so yeah, let's do, let's go a little farther. So now let's go and get a marginal cost function. 
what if my total cost function is equal to, I don't know, 1 half Q squared plus 50? How can I get a marginal cost out of that? Well, first I can look at it in terms of, that's two different pieces that I can evaluate separately, which is great. I want to graph it first, though, because that second piece doesn't even have a Q in it. And I'm going to show you something that will be true whenever you're taking the derivative with respect to something and that variable doesn't touch a piece of your equation. Uh, so if I were to graph this curve, it would look something like this. Where here's 50 and the rest is a parabola going up as 1 half Q squared. The blue chunk starts at 0 and goes up like that. The green chunk starts at 50 and is flat and never changes. When I take my derivative, I'm finding the slopes of these two things. If I take the derivative of this flat line, the derivative, what's the slope of a flat line? It's zero. So the power rule applies, as I said before, when n is not zero. But in this case, you could think of that as being times q to the zero. Power rule is not going to apply. Instead, that 50 is just going to drop out because its slope is nothing. So let's go and figure this thing out. Oops. Equals 2 times 1 half times q to the 2 minus 1 plus 0 equals q. Done. And there's how we can get our marginal cost. So let me do one more example, just for fun. Let's say we've got some q, or let's say f of q is equal to 50 plus q squared minus 3q cubed plus 4q uh, plus 1 over 9, q to the 9. If I wanted to get my f prime of this, this is just for the sake of you getting some practice, taking the derivative of the respect to q, apply your power rule to each term separately. You can pause and practice, or you can just watch and get your spoilers. Plus 2q minus 9q squared plus 4 plus q to the 8. Alright, I don't know if this is helpful to you or not. Uh, because if your class doesn't need calculus, you probably don't need to calculate these, but I kind of am making my students do it. So this is for them. Hope it helps. If not, too bad. Good luck.